Welcome to TLC for the Soul podcast, where soul meets spirit. You have entered into sacred space. I'm your host, Tammy Lynn Chambers, and I'm here to help you shine. Now let's get going on this podcast journey. Hello, kids. Hello and welcome to this, I'm calling it Scorpio season hangout. I know what Scorpio season's not quite here yet. We'll be in a couple of days, but I thought we could just hang out a little bit, drink, have a little drinky together. So this is happiness kombucha. So grab yourself something. We are enjoying this autumn day outside and we're waiting for this <laughs> fly right in front of my face. We're waiting for this little guy here to spin. So this is a gift from one of our soul sisters who is always supportive of our channel here. This is the Solar Powered Rainbow Maker. So I wanna thank beautiful Angie for gifting this to us. It says, we put the suction cup to the window that receives direct sunlight. It's kind of direct. It's actually the sun's gonna move around a little bit more, so it may not be enough sunlight yet to catch in the solar panel, but it's supposed to turn these little gears, turn these little gears inside, and then the crystal sends rainbows out all over the room. The gears spin the crystal to create beautiful rainbows that move around your room. So we're gonna see during the course of this conversation if it starts to spin. I do see the crystal already like um, shooting off a bunch of different rainbows. Oh my God, they're so pretty. Oh, let me see. Oh, I can't turn the camera. I'll have to take some pictures of her or something and put them like in here somewhere so you guys can see them. So grab yourself a little drink. Oh, and then the other thing, I didn't light any candles. I just want to see what's going on with this Scorpio season because here in a few days, we've also got this, the um, new moon solar eclipse. And we have this other thing, this whole Venus star point um, thingy that's going on that's causing a lot of raves rave reviews in the astrology community. So I thought that the guides could maybe give us a little insight into how, I just saw two, two, two on the timer, how all these things are um, showing up to play with us over the course of the next three weeks or so. We also are right in the middle of the Mandela Gateway, which is a whole series <laughs> that I did here on the channel about this new relational reality that's available to us to play in. Um, if you can stay at a high enough dimensional frequency to be able to access it. And then the other thing I want to play with is a new deck I got today. It's called the Shuffled Up Tarot. Am I saying it right? Yeah. Shuffled Up Tarot. This is an indie deck. I really, really liked it. I had my eye on it for a while and I finally um, had a little, did a little splurge. <laughs> I did a little splurge on a couple of things. I did a little splurge on that. But if you can see outside, um, it's super beautiful. It's very warm today, but over the past couple of days, it's been like 10 degrees, 11 degrees. And so I don't, I don't, thankfully, I didn't have a chance to wear it today, but I bought a heated vest. I like splurged and bought a heated vest. Oh my God, it's so amazing. So <laughs> that's definitely something you want to look at if you, um, I don't know if it gets really cold where you are. I don't know what to expect here, but about a heated vest and some really like furry earmuffs. Oh my God, so amazing. So this is for those of you who are like my little herb crafters out there. This is elderflower, rose, chamomile, and white tea kombucha. And when it pours out, it's like a pink color. And I need to finish it because I usually don't drink the whole bottle at one time. I usually about half. And so it's starting to get flat. All right. So what? Let's see. Let's just like get in this vibe. And I'll wrap us all in love light and light love. Inviting in the guides who overlight this show. Archangel Michael. Archangel Metatron. The Pleiadians. 
It doesn't have to be all business. It doesn't have to be all spirit messages, right? So I spent 10 minutes today. I just saw 444. I spent 10 minutes today vacuuming ladybugs off my living room ceiling. So there's something about this weather change that brings flies. Number one, they're in here again. Not a real, not a house fly, some other kind of fly with like little dotted wings. So I vacuumed a bunch of those last, the other night because there were so many and now they're back. There's like four, five, six, seven, eight. I can count them. I don't know how they come get in. And then I must have vacuumed about 30 ladybugs off the ceiling right now, right before I came up here. And I came back into the living room. So I went and I vacuum them up and I go and I empty them outside. It's like a little, little tiny canister. So they're still alive. They're just going to vacuum. I set them outside and I came back in and I swear there's like 30 more ladybugs up on the ceiling again. So I was like, that's it. I'm only taking out the vacuum one time because I washed the whole canister, cleaned all the filters, left them to dry. And I walked back in and I told my son, the ladybugs are more. So, I mean, yes, that's a sign of some amazing abundance and look, good luck, right? But I was like, uh, no, I just cannot have, this is my dog. My dog is like sitting there and I just see her eyes like <laughs> watching the ceiling. Like, are these things going to bother me? So, oh, I got to bring in this crystal. Hold on. This crystal has been wanting to come on the show. I've been squeezing it at night, <laughs> like squishing it. Um, so this one just wants to be on camera for some reason. This is a rhodochrosite. It's very like puffy and like, oh, uh, it's so heavy too. I think when I bought it, it they said it was like half a pound, um, but it's just like, Demi, so, you know, let that heart light just envelop you. It has some interesting little designs on the front and the back. This is amazing. It's got like a little lace doily or whatever on the front. So it's been wanting to be shown. It's like, mm, heart light. Jenny, don't dare argue today. Chur ufinirat kea artita. Did it in Jiracorototon? So there's something going on here in this Scorpio season about, um, I think, heart. Well, there's always something going on about heart opening. But elderflower and rose and chamomile. Very relaxing. Um, master master healers right so we've got happiness that's pink too and we've got this gemmy squishy puffy heart and rhodochrosite is all about obviously all about the heart space um i did read something too where it said that it's for calling in um like lost long lost loved ones so i thought that was quite interesting so it's like squeezing it even tighter at that point an elder flower is like a master teacher, right? Spirit plant. Oh my God, these birds keep flying up against my window and staring in. They're not flying against the glass. They're just hovering like regular spurt. They're just hovering outside the window. I don't know what they're doing. Um, spirit plant, rose, obviously we know like rose is like a totem on this channel. Chamomile for being very relaxed, right? And white tea is to me like very gentle. So I feel like there's a juxtaposition about this time coming up. So this to me, oh yes, what am I gonna get out of chills? This is kind of like this Venus star point energy that's coming through. It's very um it's an alignment in the sky. So I'm not going to go into the astrology of it all because I don't have all of the details. I'm waiting for this little gears to spin. I see the crystal. It looks like it's slightly moved. I don't have all the details of what it means astrologically, um, but I've seen se several um, big astrologers like talk about it so, for so far. So Molly McCord had brought it up and then Braca Goldsmith had it on her channel and I don't go beyond that too much, but I've seen other people posting about it as well. So there's something here about Jemmy 
gushy self-love and self-care, which what's new, right? We're always supposed to be doing self-love and self-care. But how are we taking advantage of this new re relational reality that's available to us? Um, how are we staying high vibe? How are we... Um, How are we caring for others? How are we caring for ourselves? And when I think of calming in lost loves, I feel like it's not just like people. I feel like it could also be um, things you used to love that maybe you forgot about or you don't have time to do as much anymore. Um, that you'll have some opportunities, and of course you will because the seasons are changing. So you'll have some opportunities um, in the Northern Hemisphere to slow down even more as we move into Samhain. And then we start making our way towards the winter solstice. Like there's more opportunities to go within. Mm. Mm. Those rainbows, come on. <laughs> more opportunities to go within. So I don't want to jump into this shuffled up deck just yet. And there's one reason I'm, like, I'm letting it, sit. I'm going to let this heart sit on top of it. It just came in the mail today. I'm actually going to pull a card from Bubble Bubble. I still am in this spooky Samhain Halloween vibe. It's October 19th here, I think. Um, if you haven't been following every day, I have been posting a daily Oracle message because it's a motivation for me to finish a book and another deck of cards as the year goes to a close. By the time Final Harvest gets here at Samhain, I want to at least say that I have published another book and another deck of cards. So I think for this year, by the time the year ends, the whole series of Loveland will be published. So we have Loveland, Spring, Summer, and this is the Autumn Fall Pack. And then here, after I finish Hive Magic, I'm going to finish the Winter Pack of this. So this will, if you merge them all, will be an 88 card um, Oracle deck spanning all the seasons, sacred elements, fun times of the year, all of that. So we're going to pull from that. And then I don't know if we publish Hive Magic and maybe one more before the end of the year. Then I think we'll publish like four or five books this year. I think it's pretty good. Um, it's, it's okay. <laughs> I've, I've had better years where I've done a lot more, but it's, it's okay considering all the other stuff that was going on. So let's just see what's going on for Bubble Bubble and this whole Scorpio uh, season and this whole eclipse and Samhain and all that. Oh, God. Time to spend some time alone. As if we haven't spent already enough time alone. Yeah, I feel like I'm always alone. So it's like, why don't I spend more time alone? Um, you know, it's like me and my son and my dog. And I'm going to put these. I might end up taking a picture of them. So when I see that, I'm like, no, I don't want to spend any more time alone. I've had enough. Um... I actually, it was so funny yesterday, or no, today, yesterday, I was like, oh, I want to learn more about wild foraging in my area. There's a syn another synchronous, you always, I always, whenever I talk to you guys, have interesting synchronicities and serendipity show up. So I said, um, well, thank you. It's my guides and my and guardian angels and spirit friends that all help with that. But yesterday I was like, oh, I want to learn about wild foraging. So I started looking up like North Dakota, wild foraging, what's here and all that. And I had it. And I'm like, it doesn't seem like there's much happening here. <laughs> like not that many great things. And then every time I'm sitting down, well, it's twice now that I sit down with Master Co. Somebody comes to the door that is like an answer to something that I needed. So I I, I meditate with Master Co. every day. But I put on Master Co. I'm waiting to do the meditation. I'm listening to his. I like to just spend time with the teacher and listen to his teaching and, you know, his vibe is good for me because he's a big go-getter and so I need that. And so I hear like knock, knock, knock and I hear a little lady go, hello. This is the second time my little lady has knocked on the door like during a master co-meditation and been like, hello. And my dog was like, because <laughs> I have my door open and I have like my storm door closed. 
And so I go and it's like a little lady. I mean, she's small and she's like, the dog doesn't even phase her. She's just standing just so strong against the door. And she's like showing me this little card. And I was like, what is this? And I had to go out. So I'm like, can I come out and talk to you? She is an elder, but she's running for a Chimata Harakere. I'll probably say it all wrong. She's running for an office, like some sort of political office seat, but she's not in part of any political party. She's an independent. And um, she was just the most amazing person. I mean, the little pamphlet that she gave me uh, about herself, I was like, oh my God. She's like a retired doctor for 40 years. She was a, a physician in this town. Um, but her family's from China and she lived on the East Coast. But I mean, all the stuff she'd done. And then, but she tells me like, oh, you know, how do you like the city? And we were just talking about stuff and she runs, this is so funny with the foraging. She says, oh, I run a, I have created a community garden and an orchard and a hiking trail and all this stuff out on the other part of town. And I'm like, I think I know what you're talking about. She's like, we have a hiking trail. We do seed harvesting. We do foraging. We just planted a bunch of these different types of trees. So I do plant identification. I have all the plants labeled. I'm like, oh my God, this is exactly what I was talking about or what I was think wondering about. And she says, yeah, we, if you want to volunteer, you can volunteer and go help out and, you know, weed or plants or harvest seeds or whatever. And I was like, oh my gosh, this is so perfect. This is exactly um, something I would be interested in. You know, it's, uh, there's so many interesting things around this town, but for to have her come to my door and say that the day after I was looking at the wild foraging was obviously such a, a like deep gratitude that my guides are like, oh, we're actually paying attention to stuff she's looking at um, and sent me this lady. So she was really, really cute. And I thought, oh, I'm gonna go hang out. And then she has a lot of like connections in town. I'm like, oh, I need connections around this town because you know, whenever I need like somebody to do work on my property, I can never find anybody around here. So I was like, ooh, she has the hookups. Um, she's been in like the city something legislative. I don't remember all the deets, but she's been part of the political scene around the town and neighboring towns for like over 20 years. So it was like, so just that alone, the credentials alone made me feel like, <laughs> am I doing, there it goes back to the shadow self as part of Scorpio. Am I doing enough? Cause I was like, this lady has like a very amazing um, resume. And it made me feel like, hmm, let me get my act into gear. So she does a lot of charity work. I'm like, okay, that's on my, that's not really a bucket list, but I know that's part of my soul mission moving forward. Um, there's some other things that have to fall into place before I can get more active like that. But I was like, that definitely is along the lines of where, you know, when I get to that age in my life, because she was definitely an elder older than me, I would say she was probably almost 70 years old. She, I want to have like an amazing list of stuff like that, of, of helping out, because all helping out stuff like community related stuff, helping charity work giving back the whole seed garden and all of that. I was like, wow. Hats off to her. All right, what did I just draw from? Bubble, bubble. All right, let's get lovely in. So all these things I'm talking about here wouldn't be coming into the picture if this wasn't like the themes of this Scorpio season. So how are you giving back? What are you doing to maybe tithe? And I really wanted this. I wanted to come on today and do some emotional healing or prosperity healing for us. And I just was like, meh, meh. I felt kind of wah, wah about it. I'm like, I know we need to do it. Like it's constantly like peeling the onion. We have to do it. So maybe here on Friday or something, I will do like a prosperity healing because the more we work and heal in our root chakra and some of these other areas where there's lack um, stored up and the emotional healing the same thing like healing stuck emotions and pulling out things helps with your prosperity so we need to do that and I know that that's I'm just paying it forward from um, Master Cho and Master Ko um, my teachers you know because that's the work that they do the whole pranic healing scene um, and I want to help pay that forward too because that has really changed my life um, Pranic, the pranic healing and, and really spending every day, um, 30 minutes a day or so on my spiritual practice and, 
um, meditation work. So I want to give back and, you know, honor my teachers. So, oh, and this card just flew out. Oh my God, see? I knew it. The Smeagol. So as I'm talking about that, the Smeagol looked on from behind the bushes, too scared to step forward and make new friends. So this lady comes to my door and she's like, oh, you're new. Um, and I'm like, yeah, I work for myself. I work from home and, um, okay, you'll have to excuse me here, but it's getting really hot. And, uh, and she says, well, how are you getting out of the community? Are you meeting real people, like real people? She shouldn't say real people, but um, she says, are you, um, are you getting into town and seeing people? Because I told her, you know, I work for myself. I work from home. And uh, everybody I know is online. I don't really know anybody in this town other than my neighbors, my neighbor. And um, <laughs> she's like, Oh, I don't want to have to worry about you now. And I was like, okay, maybe that's the physician. That's the, the compassionate, kind heart coming out. Like, I don't want to have to worry about you. Uh, are you doing okay? Like, I guess she thought I was all isolated and alone in my house. And I'm like, no, all my friends are online. They live in other, you know, states and other cities. And, you know, my community's online. And, you know, if I told her if I need to talk to somebody in real life, I'll just go down to the coffee. There's a really good coffee shop here. I'm like, I'll just go down to the coffee shop and, like, find somebody to talk to. Like, I'm not sh shy like that so you know like I am not like totally introvert like <laughs> spirit um you know too scared to step forward and make new friends that's not really me I can be a big time introvert but I'm not like socially awkward or, or whatever whatever you know what I mean <sighs> the Gemini and the Aries moon all right, what is this giant deck? Let's look at this deck. This deck is interesting to me. So it is a tarot deck. It's all illustrated by the person that made it. I'll have to find her name. Her shop is on Etsy. It's not really labeled. So some of the major arcana, I don't still get them because well, you'll see. Let's see what has to come out of this deck. It's a big deck. See, it's a big deck and a lot of it is border. So I may have a winter project of taking these borders off because it just barely fits in my hand. And we don't need those giant, giant borders. I should say that. Like, do my decks have giant borders? No, sometimes they do, but I'm trying to make out like, so there's not such big borders, but anyway. Okay, let's just shuffle this and see what comes out of this deck. Do you guys like to see the shuffling? Oh, oh, this is jumping. Um, <laughs> the Four of Pentacles. Now, what I do find interesting about this Four of Pentacles is there's three pentacles on the ground and one pentacle, like, on his nose. So, I guess in the real Four of Pentacles, what they're, like, holding one... And the others are kind of around, so that's quite interesting. It's definitely a balancing act. It's that spiral in the tail. And I just keep hearing the when pigs, when pigs fly. He's not going to fly. He's like trying to balance on these pentacles. I want another card to go with this. So, so, oh, sip and savor. Oh, this is the sloth. A sloth spirit friend coming through. So we have this Smeagol. What is all this love? Oh, this feels so solitary, right? So we have, we're asking about the Venus star point energy. We're asking about the Scorpio season. Are we done with Venus star point? They're like, no, it's all part of this. So spending time alone. Not being afraid to get out there and make new friends, unlike the Smeagol who doesn't want to get come out from behind the trees. And then what, it, oh, so it's a balance. So it kind of goes in the middle, 
Right, so balancing alone time with getting out there and being a little bit more social, that seems like kind of like generic message. Like I'm expecting, you know, life-changing events and you're telling me about the Mandela Gateway and all this relational reality. But that is part of the new relational reality. The higher vibing, the higher dimensions are not rat race run around dimensions where where um they there's more time to okay there's more time to play there's more time to love <laughs> there's more time to like slow down and enjoy yourself I want some more cards Chimpidoriki we got oh more oh the three of pentacles hmm I'm squinting I always squint when I three of pentacles but look there's a lot of hands there's like six hands three pentacles six hands three people I know this is like a card of co-creation. Many hands make light work. Oh, where did I just see that? I keep, there's a lot. Um, there's a lot coming up about asking for help when you need it, not just from the physical world, and not just for uh, um, asking for help from your guides for for big things. So I think that there's maybe this thing about you know like oh I'm only going to tap into my guides if I really really need them. Um, or if there's something big that I'm trying to manifest, you know, I'm working with my guides on that. And it's like, they're, they're saying like, but we're available to help you with anything you need. So, you know, if you can't find something, ask us, we'll help you find it. Or sometimes they play games with that a little bit. It's like, well, let me lead you down the mulberry path. Just finding what you've lost. But, um, it's asking for help. Co-creating along with spirit is just that. It's co-creating in, in all areas of your life. So, like when I needed um, some work done around the house, I couldn't find anybody in my town who was available. And I was just like, please help me find somebody. This is just too much work. And I did find someone. They were quite far away, but they were like perfect. Exactly what I needed and very high vibe person. Um, you know, a person like a, a younger person who was a business, you know, businessman with a very, um, a very, I could tell he had like a very detailed business plan. Like, and he was like already saying things like, oh, I sponsor this, this and that. And I get back to the community and I'm like, yes. So the higher vibe you go, um, and the more you can stay there, then the more you're being shown in your outer reality reflections of yourself and so in this case the people that are coming to me just like the lady to Madeline her name is Madeline just like Madeline and I forgot this other guy's name Brandon Brandon Brett I don't remember um I'm getting people who mirror back to me the the things that I guess are already intrinsically um in my field so then there really is nothing lacking right there's nothing lacking um, because what's being shown to you is for the most part a reflection of who you are that's not 100 percent across the board either um there could be people in your life who are here to teach you lessons. And, and so I don't like that blanket statement, like everybody that's around you is a mirror of who you are. Maybe slightly, but there's some people that are here to teach you lessons and they're not mirroring you. They're here to stretch you and grow you and trigger you and make you learn. So I don't take that mirroring thing like blanket for every like, little thing. All right. Let's get one more card from the shuffled up. We're on a roll here with this one. Let's see. We have a three and a four. We have a four three going on though in the tarot cards. 
that makes me curious what's going to show up next. So let me just show these together. We have a 4-3, like a countdown kind of a thing going on. And they're both pentacles. So I want to see what's going to show up next. All right, little gears, come on. I think this little, there's not enough sun for my little solar powered crystal today. I think I'm going to have to put it in a different window tomorrow and let the little solar panel like charge up a little bit more. But I do like the little crystals. Oh, it looks like a little heart. Oh, look at that. Cute. Okay, let's get one more. But you can do it with these, you did. Oh, that's going back in. There's a lot of light language coming through here. What is going on with the light language? We're going to plug into that here in a minute. Oh, this is one of those where I don't know what it is. It's a major arcana card. Is it? Six. Oh, okay, we're just going to read this one intuitively. She sent me like, she sent a little like pamphlet along with it of what the cards are. Okay, but if we just look at this, I'm not going to go get it. This reminds me of like this whole Venus star point thing. Um, one, two, three, four, five, five stars, hearts and footprints. And the eyes are, um, blindfolded. This is not the justice card. I know I kind of want to know. Hold on. Oh, what did I do with it? I don't know what I did with the little paper. Oh, here it is. No, that's not it. Okay, well, I don't know what I did with the little paper, so I guess I'm not meant to find the little paper right now. <laughs> Maybe I left it downstairs. So I guess we're just supposed to read it intuitively and not think about that. So we talked about mirroring, and those two people are mirroring each other, like, exactly. All the stars in the hearts... This reminds me of like divinely um, guided relationships, any type. Is that the, is that the lover's card? Oh my God, sorry guys. I don't know the major arcana by heart. Like the numbers, like six is this. Is six the lover's? Haha, <laughs> you told me I couldn't have the little paper, but I looked it up anyway. Oh my gosh. Wow. I'm not really sure how I feel about this lover's card. <laughs> it's so devoid of personality. It's so... It does remind me of like star. I think that where we're going with here is star-crossed lovers. And this particular deck, I know one of the things she said about this deck is this meant to be um, gender and race neutral. So like no, well, not gender neutral because there's genders here, but like the, no races. And I guess in this case, it would be like any type of relationship, like same sex or whatever. So I guess that's why we're going with the, just the silhouette heads. But it is so like star-crossed lovers. Not sure about the blindfolds, but maybe they're hats. <laughs> I don't know. Why are we getting the lover's card? Six. Okay, we need to clarify the lovers. I'm going to clarify the lovers at the bottom of the deck, which I haven't... I, I... Hmm, it's the king of swords. King of Swords. So there's a lot going on here. There's a bird. Um, 
he's got uh, air, oh, air signs, yes. Um, Gemini, Libra, Aquarius on his jacket. Oh, his throne. His throne's kind of off to the side over here. I guess we're meant to more see that, like that big red, the red coat. Why are y'all talking about, what does red coats in the Boston Tea Party have to do with anything? I think there's something going on with uh, the Pluto, the Pluto return, but that's an effect only on the United States, I thought. What does that have to do with the King of Swords and the Lovers? I think just because we're asking specifically about this time period, this Scorpio season, I think there's a lot of like, um, again, back to serendipitous and synchronistic things going on in the collective as well. Um, as on this show, we don't try to like bring them in as much because it's like, well, there's so much going on there. But I think there's a lot happening to um, raise the vibration of the collective one of them, I mean, Pl the Pluto return for the USA or something, I have not heard, I have not, I've seen that is, is happening. I haven't listened to anything about it, so I can't profess to know anything that's going on there. But I think that there are some big opportunities for the collective vibration to raise, rise. Some of it is this, um, this star-crossed lovers thing. So, I've been hearing in some of the channels that I follow a lot of divine unions coming into union or reunion, um, divine counterparts coming out of separation, not just in this lifetime, not just the like, oh, you know, we separate, we met and we separated and now we're back together. More like um, we've never met in this lifetime and now we're coming back together after many lifetimes apart because we've raised our vibration enough. And when, when, that, when those things happen, I've talked about this many times on the channel before, when those things happen, um, the, the vibration of the planet goes up when two beings that are, are living a very high relational reality lifestyle come into contact with each other again. After many lifetimes apart, it causes a... Wow, they're saying it almost causes like its own solar flare and it raises the vibration of the planet. Mm -hmm. This reminds me when I look at it, just not knowing, I mean, I know what card it is, but when I look at it just at the picture, um, it reminds me of like a bringers of the light kind of um, light warrior, light worker type of uh, energy, which would, is what they said went along with this star-crossed lovers. So more, yes, more and more um, of these types of relationships are coming into union, reunion, together, whatever, into communication, raising the vibration of the planet because um, these two parties, whoever they are, have a soul mission and a soul purpose that's very important to raising the vibration of the planet, to um, bringing in more high vibe uh, lifestyle choices and helping the helping raise the vibration of the collective. Wow, okie doke. And then they're saying there's one more. They want me to get a love land card first. My son went out walking. I told him it's going to get cold here in a little bit. He has to come back. I don't know where he went. I've never met a person who can walk so far in such a short period of time. Like, he can leave the house, and then not even 30 minutes later, I'll be like, where are you? And he'll be like, I'm on the other side of town. And the other side of town is like, I don't know how far it is. It's not that big of a town, y'all. I said before, it's probably like five mile radius, but he can walk like a couple of miles, like in 30, it was like 30 minutes or so. I'm like, are you running? I'm like, nope, just walking. And it's not just like straight walking, it's like going down hiking trails and up and down and this, that. Okay. All right, the last thing, so I brought in my son, so there's something about, oh, I brought up the thing about him walking. And then look, we got Loveland. 
Do everything you love this season and always. So we talked about hiking, walking, we've got apple picking, playing outside with your dog, building a fall altar, hanging out by a body of water, playing in fall leaves, getting dressed up for, in this case, Halloween, which I know in the Southern Hemisphere you wouldn't have that but right now, but. All right, so what goes along with this card? Because they're saying this is kind of the final Scorpio season themes. Oh, oh, she made together. This deck is lively, isn't it? <laughs> Do you see me trying to interpret these cards? This is the Knight of Pentacles. The Knight of Pentacles, because it has this little horsey up here. That's the knight. And he's got an hourglass. And dude, look at that. It's just what I was talking about. It's like my son went out walking, I swear. It's like, okay. Um, it's almost like the fool card in a way, too. Um, we went out walking. Um, like this person's very youthful with their guitar and their what's with the what's with the Chiminica? It says something here. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So this sidewalk that they're walking on is the days of the week. It's really hard to see, but they're like, it's like right here. And there's the hourglass. We have this message, we have this come up, I have this come up for myself and then um, offline with folks too, talking about um, well, Scorpio season, the eclipse, a, a big eclipse is coming, emotions getting all kind of <laughs> stirred up um, because things are coming out now to be purged, um, especially prior to the eclipses here this one and the next one, which is a couple of weeks later for the full moon, um, big things are being stirred up to be released and purged. And the thing is, you know, when they come up, if you're keeping up with your spiritual practice, then you know, you'll catch yourself like, whoa, this is not me. Th these are things that I, I've created. These are thoughts and emotions and things I created as the soul. Cre I'm the creator of my reality. I created these things. And now I need to release them and get rid of them. So I had that the past couple of mornings. I woke up really anxious about a certain situation. And I was like, oh, I don't want to. I actually was like, I do not. I told my guides, I do not want to wake up like this anymore. Actually, I actually didn't tell my guides. I told myself, kind of like my higher self telling myself, like, I don't want to wake up like this anymore. I don't want to be anxious about this situation anymore. So this is like parenting yourself. We are not going to wake up like this ever again. So in this situation that I'm worried about, I'm releasing that. I've released it all into the violet fire. So I think we need to, we need to do some sessions on that with you guys. Um, and then I said, I'm, gonna cho I'm always going to choose the better thinking thought. And in this case, I don't have any reason to be overly worried about this situation. So I'm just going to enjoy myself instead. So it's finding ways to Number one, recognize when you're wobbling. This is this. We just gave this message somewhere out the wobble. The, it was in our card reading. It was on our pick a card. The wobble. Recognize when you're wobbling. Write yourself. Clear the energy and find a better thinking thought. This is coming up again. This is coming up again. So you guys need to hear this. Oh, and it's weird because I grabbed this. I thought I was grabbing the do everything you love, but look, I grabbed this smeagol along with this guy kind of walking solo. This is, again, back to the original message. We're back to the beginning again about spending time alone, some time by yourself to get clear on what's going on, um, hearing any messages you need to hear, but not, you know, not so much time that you're not you're isolating yourself. You're getting out there. You're making yourself available. Um, maybe there's something in your community going on. Um, I don't know if it snows here and it turns into like a blizzard or <laughs> what I'll be doing out in the freaking community. That's another, that's the other situation. I'm totally like, oh, the winter, I can't bear it. I just can't bear the thought of it. I can't bear the thought of it so much that I just have stopped thinking about it. And I'm like, Spirit, you just have to send me the help when you need it. Uh, Cause I really don't know how I'm doing that. But 
the days of the week, it's like you're biding. It's like you're, you're not biding your time. It's each day you're using your time to its best, to your, the best that you can. Back to what I was talking about on the daily Oracle messages. Like I started doing the fly lady system to get myself better organized. Um, Cause you just spend 10 minutes per task and you don't have to do all the tasks at one time. Um, so if you guys are more interested in like what I'm doing for this fly lady thing around my house, you know, I can do something separate on that, um, help you get organized. And then um, it gives me more time. So I don't have to worry about like, cause I'm kind of like a warrior, like, oh, that floor looks dirty there. Not dirty, but I'll see like dog hair or something. And I'm like, oh my God, I need to clean that. And then I'll be like, I don't have time to clean it. And it's like, I, but I don't have to drop everything and clean it right now because with the, this fly lady thing, I get to it at some point during the week anyway. And what I find is when you use like a 10 minute timer, in 10 minutes, I can do the task that needs to be done. And then I can feel like confident, like, oh, I accomplished something rather than me trying to clean my whole entire house and then be, I'll be like totally burned out. But I would, I, we used to do that, like everything's dirty, I gotta clean all the floors, all this. You break your house into zones and you focus on a different zone every week. And I don't wanna go too much, too much here, but I got really organized with that. So now when I see the dog hair like outside the door in the hallway on the floor, on the wood floor, I can be like, okay, I don't have to jump, drop everything and run and get the, the floor steamer right now because I know, um, you know, in a couple of days or whatever, I'm going to be work. That's my zone and I'll be in that hallway anyway. So I just let it like, I, it can slide for a couple more days. It's not the end of the world. And I have more time to enjoy myself and, um, and do something like this, like go out walking, you know, so, so, yeah, right. Taking my dog out for more walks, which is actually what I need to get up and start doing here. So let me see if there's anything else we want to say about this um, season. I think this crystal is slowly, slowly turning, but there's just not enough solar juice right now. Because every time I turn it's around, it seems like it's in a little tiny bit of a different position. There's just not enough oomph to get it to go all the way around. All right, let's just tap in here. Anything else I want to share about Scorpio season and Venus star points and eclipses? No, they don't really have anything. So with my dog acting like a crazy person, I am going to go ahead and close out our little hangout session. And I hope this you had some useful tips, tricks, and advice from all of us here on the channel and we will be back again soon. We'll be back again tomorrow morning with the next um, Oracle message and storytelling from Hive Magic. So see y'all again soon. Take care.